Charles came to play tonight. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line. Weber imploring the crowd. Jimmy Smith hitting the three. Come again. Big time plays here by Steve Smith. Welcome to Open Court, Curious Tales of the NBA. I'm Ernie Johnson, and if you've been watching this show here on NBA TV, you know it's fast gaining popularity worldwide simply because of the high caliber of expert analysis that we present each and every time. <laughs> Four-time NBA champion, Shaquille O'Neal, heads our panel. The Hall of Famer, the Dream Teamer, Charles Barkley is here. One of the all-time great clutch shooters in NBA history, Reggie Miller. Five-time All-Star and former Rookie of the Year, Chris Webber. In 14 years, he was an All-Star and NBA champion. He is Steve Smith. Five-time NBA champion with the Bulls and the Spurs, Steve Kerr. And finally, two-time NBA champion, the crop duster, Kenny Smith. <laughs> hey, once upon a time, it was the Jet. In this segment, the crop duster, we ask the question. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that was yeah. good. That was good. It took a while, but worth the wait. We ask the question, has the big man vanished from the NBA? Never get tired of uh, looking at the old video of the uh, the rim being destroyed by Shaquille O'Neal. How many times did you do that? Probably like ten or twelve. Was it that many times? <laughs> no, yeah, it, was two, it was two or three in the NBA. I just had to add some barbecue sauce to it. <laughs> you know, uh, Joe Underhill, our underdog, our, our ace stat man, points out that in the last 15 years in the NBA, only the only true center is you to, to score to average in the top five in scoring in the last 15 years. You're not counting Amari Stoudemire, not counting Tim Duncan, but in the last 15 years, only you, Shaq, in the top five. Where have all the, the dominant big men gone? <clears throat> you can either say they have evolved or you can say they fell off. You know, a lot of different experts will say different things. Me, I was a power player. Uh, when I was playing in Phoenix Sun, I used to tell Steve Kerr was the general manager, I wasn't born with the gifts you were born with. <laughs> I don't have the ability. That was my line. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't have the ability to step outside and shoot the jumper. But you know, if you're a fan of the game, I guess you could appreciate a, a guy that's supposed to play center, like a Dirk Nowitzki. But you see him step out shot and shoot the three, drive to the hole, create for his teammates. So you know, again, either they fell off or they evolved. I mean, so much in sports is cyclical in nature that you know you'll that'll come around again. Are we going to see a time again where every team has a has a big man or tries to have a dominant big man in there in the middle, C-Web? You may, if, if it's because of defensive uh, presence. Um, but I think the game is so quick and so fast now. You know, one thing about Shaq that was underestimated was that he was just as quick as a guard. He wasn't fast, or any, but I mean, when you have the ball here and you want to do a James Worthy move, a spin baseline or something, you can shake someone and go the other way. For me, they came in the NBA they wanted me to play center. I weighed 245 pounds, and I'm five inches shorter than, or three inches shorter than most centers. And for me, checking a guy like a Shaq or checking a, a, a big dude and playing the center position, I felt I might have a chance offensively because I can use quickness and things like that before the game, wearing down, banging down, me going to help, and I'm the biggest guy. Now a guard has to rotate to him. I, I think that, one, you have to be really big and good. And so, it, you know, you look in the NBA, it's him and Dwight Howard that are big guys. I don't know if you'll ever see you know, that type of presence, and the style of play has changed, too. I mean, you know, but when you look at the game, and, and I think we've had this conversation before, when you used to watch Kareem and the undefendable skyhook, you wonder, why doesn't, why hasn't another player come along with, with that kind of a move lately that would just make him an unstoppable force? Reg? Well, I, I, first of all, Kareem was <laughs> born with that shot. I mean, that's something that, you know, you think about 
even Magic Johnson, to a certain degree, tried to emulate and copy it, but it still wasn't the same Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sky hook. Uh, that's one shot that'll probably never ever be duplicated. You know, at seven foot, that was one shot that could, uh, you know, you throw it down to the guy down in the post. There's no way you're going to be able to defend that. But to me, and to go along with Shaq, to me the game has evolved. The notion was that you had to have a dominant center to win championships, and that's not the case. And Personally, to me, I think the change really started in 92 with the Dream Team and in 96 in Dream Team 2, because if you look at the European big men, it's not as dominant as a Shaq or a David Robinson or a Kim Olajuwon down low. They're more pick-and-pop players. Now that they're in the NBA, that's where the game is starting to evolve. I think as of late, Reggie, def definitely to echo that, the zone defense right now prevents a big man from dominating. And I think also big man coaching. I mean, if you go around, and I think everybody goes around and watch coaching kids, everybody's teaching crossovers to big guys. No one's teaching post moves, the fundamentals. And, you know, we don't glorify a guy rebounding anymore, playing defense, and then playing down in the post. I think that's the lost arc. I don't think it'll ever be the dominant big man again. Because when I know when I came to the league, Chuck, and watching you guys before me, it was five, six guys on every team that was 6'10", 6'11". I don't think you can find but maybe 10 guys that played a post position now. But a well, lot of you said it's, it's Chuck's fault, though. No, it's, to it's me, Chuck's it's Chuck's fault. No, it's, it's your fault. It's Magic's fault. It's Dr. J's fault. No, in a, good, in a great way because <laughs> I'm tall and I'm young and I'm watching you. I'm like, oh, you know, after the dunk contest, you try this. So in 21, you try a crossover move. We saw you go full court behind the back and dunk. You telling me power forwards don't want to do that now? You know, it, it was like, oh, wait, I can do that? Wait, he can actually do that? And I think that's been part of the evolution, too, the fact that you've seen some really tall, big players do some crazy things, and you want to be the type of player that they are and see if you can get that skill. I, I think, I don't think the big man has disappeared or vanquished. Uh, I just think that there's very few guys who are that big. You know, it's a bunch of players who are 6'10 in that range, but there are very few guys. All the guys you mentioned as great centers, they're like seven feet tall. I, I don't know why, what it is. There's very few players as big as Shaquille, as big as Robert Parrish, Kareem, and those type guys. I mean, uh, there's just not that many big guys in the NBA. And on top of that, Go ahead. There's, there's very few that are that big and really athletic and skilled. You know, Shaq was one, obviously, but you know, you look at all those those guys that we saw in the highlights, th there there have been very few big, great big men in the history of the NBA. There's always sort of like three or four, even, even back in the 70s. It wasn't like there were 10 or 15 great big men. Now, when you're sixth grade and you're six foot two, you know, they don't put you in the post. When you were, in, 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 when you were younger, growing up, Shaq, there was no question that he was going to play in the post. Uh, Dwight Howard is probably uh, probably someone who throws back into that time where they, you're learning how to play with your back to the basket. But Kevin Garnett, as Shaq said, Dirk Nowitzki, these guys were taught to play with facing the basket. So it's really about scoring areas. You, you're dominating the game, but from different positions. Dirk Nowitzki dominates the game. He's a dominant player. But now, instead of dominated, dominating it from a certain area of the floor, that is traditionally a big guy, seven foot area, he takes guys into a space that they're not comfortable being with. And that made his success come. That made Chris Webber's success come because he took guys in the areas of the floor that they weren't accustomed to being and all of a sudden they can't move their feet. Well, well Kenny, let me ask a question to the panel. You know, everybody goes to a key, and obviously I would too if a big man, but where would a college kid go? Where would a high school, kid, a high school kid go that's a big man? Everybody can't go to a king. Most of these kids now in college, they don't have coaches. No, they have, yeah. they have, they have Kevin Durant, uh, Kevin Durant Kevin Garnett, right. Dirk Nowitzki, 6'10 guys who put it on the floor. So they're going to emulate that. There's no question about it. You emulate what you see. And because of the European influence of where they take in the game, because their bigger guys started playing on the perimeter first, it became a better, play, a better, a better <laughs> visual as well for a lot of guys. And all due respect to, to Dwight Howard, who is probably the best big man in our game today, this, we'll never see this again a guy that dominated from block to block. Because like you're saying, what everyone's doing now is they're going to ESPN, to TNT, to NBA TV, and they're looking at how can I 
Shaq get will on, be a small how, forward if you How can I get on TV with highlights? <laughs> we'll never see this week. again. It's all free. about highlights now. It's not about dominating. It's free. about looking good. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, how would things be different? What if, and this is a what if question, what if Yao Ming had a healthy career? What if, what if Yao Ming were injury free? Yeah, Would mean, things have been different in terms of titles in Houston, for instance? Yeah, I mean, it was a mixture of both. He can go inside and outside. And, you know, Kenny made a great point about what you emulate. When I was coming up, Patrick Ewing was the guy. Mm -hmm. He was the guy. He played mm -hmm. with his back to the basket, boom, boom, drop step, boom, boom, jump hook, every now and then jab step, shoot the jumper. And, you know, that's all I had to go by. But, you know, in, in the case of Yao Ming, he's seven, seven, six, uh, can post up, he can shoot the jumper. And uh, I think if he wouldn't have had his, you know, had to retire because of injury. Ernie, you know, you know he would have been one, one of the greatest. You know, we were talking about Shaq when he was retiring last year. I think Shaquille, staying healthy his whole career, is one of the amazing things in, in NBA history. Because you look at guys, you look at Yao Ming, you look at uh, Sabonis. Bill Walton. Bill Walton, all these guys. Shaquille was bigger than all those guys. For him to stay healthy... It's one of the great freaks of nature. Mm -hmm. What was your secret, Shaq? Chuck, thank you for that comment. I'll give you your money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the secret I thought we had. Uh, we got to go. You're watching Open Court. You're going to make me cry, man. Oh, You're going to make me fall off the bottles. <laughs> That's the way we grew up. Like When you play basketball in the hood, that it's more just competitive. It ain't You ain't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But Michael... Uh, and, and Reggie and Gary Payton and Ladbird were the four best in my day. I talked to you, my boy. You was my boy. Everybody <laughs> on this panel was my boy except Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Magic words, Reggie. Oh, I was wondering how the next movie was getting ready to come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being a film critic. That's it. That's anyway, it. we're talking about talking smack, and uh, we'll try to keep this uh, this segment to the it's allotted time. But who is oh, the PG? Who is the best? Yeah. <laughs> who is the best? Who is the best? Uh, I guess best or worst uh, trash talker. GP. I played with GP. I played against GP. He he just didn't care. And the crazy thing about GP on the court, he was like that off the court. Like, if he saw you in the mall, <laughs> maybe that time I crossed you up, big fella, and I gave you that thing, you know, did that, and you almost put your arm out of socket. You can't call me, boy, I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm first ballot, boy. I'm first ballot. Larry Bird, Michael, Gary Pate, and Reggie were the four guys that... But the thing that always annoyed me was trash talk used to be cool. The guys wasn't saying mean-spirited things. They were just like... That's the way we grew up. Like, when you play basketball in the hood, that, it's more just competitive. It ain't, you ain't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But Michael uh, and, and Reggie and Gary Payton and Ladbird were the four best in my day. What would, give me an example, Charles, what you would say. What, what, what one of the guys would say? No, what you would say. When you talk, I'll friends. tell you what he oh, said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing him in uh, Washington. And, uh, I'm playing him in Washington, and, I, and um, he's a little older. I think uh, you know it was, it was maybe four more years in his career, but you know, and uh, I, I follow him, and I get you know get away with it, come back down, and uh, the next time uh, you know he's going off at the ref. He followed me, he followed me, and, and uh, I'm like, I ain't following. He, he over there crying. And the ref, he's like, uh, he looked at the ref, he's like, I scored 24,000 points or something. I scored 20,000 points right here in this position. You gonna tell me he ain't found me? And the ref just shook. <laughs> and I knew, I knew I was in trouble. I was like, this ref, you know. The ref was intimidated by his talk. But a lot of guys, like you said, it's just, it's not it's malicious. Just a, it's just what you're doing. I, 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 
I just hated when a guy thought he could guard me, to be honest with you. I'm like, dude, please, just, uh, just work hard, but you can't stop me. <laughs> yeah, should you, should you earn the right to talk trash? Oh, yeah, no you No, know, I wouldn't call it talking trash. And yeah, definitely some people talk trash, but a lot of people just talk. I mean, I, I would add Reggie, Michael, but also Vernon Maxwell. Just, just talked and played. I, I was a guy who always talked to get myself going, and I would go at somebody, especially like Shaq. We would go back and forth. Somebody that I knew, I would always talk. So I think the one thing is certain players talk trash, but certain players talked. I thought Reggie was a guy that talked and got himself going. That was the only reason why I talked, truthfully. Get himself going. I mean, there's times, especially at home, everyone, you're expected to win at home. You got all the advantages. But when you're on the road and it's 12 versus 15, 16,000, sometimes you got to have self-motivation. And a lot of times, I would say things or make up things or come up with things with fans or with opposing players, really, just to get me going. It's never mean-spirited. And like Chuck says, this is how most of us grew up mm -hmm. playing the game of basketball, was talking to one another, seeing who could best. It, it's wow, almost like the Joneses. Hey, you know, well, what did you, what did you have to make up uh, with John Starks? That he could, there was absolutely no way, positively, that he could guard me. If he you, thought he could seriously guard me, and that's the whole point, because <laughs> Pat Wait Riley, Pat, Pat Riley, yeah, yeah, Pat Riley, okay, Pat Pat Riley. Riley. John Stocks, still, where you at, Doc? <laughs> no, John's a good guy, hard worker. <laughs> we'll battle you, you. we'll battle you. He can't guard you. But he's a good guy. Hey, there was absolutely but, no but, way. You, you, must have, you must have said some really good things to get a headbutt. But that's the whole point, because you're trying to get the advantage, and especially in a playoff series, if you can get a guy to his bowling point. What did you say to get him to the bowling point? I'm not going to tell you what I said, because this is a PG show, and that was X-rated. You know, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, well, you did say something very interesting then. What he said, like, Ernie, most of the time, it's, it's going back with the fans. Because the fans are the one, because most of the time, other players don't really talk trash as much as people think. But some of the stuff these fans say, and get away with it. And get, and get away, away with it. I, I, I've always been a firm believer when I'm commissioner of the NBA <laughs> that you should be able to go up Lock in the out. stand. <laughs> you should go be able to go up in the stand and bring a fan. <laughs> Seriously, I mean this sincerely, too. So you should be able to go up in the stands, bring a fan down to half court. Uh, say what you just said right now. <laughs> <laughs> just right here, right now. Please say what Wait, you just you said. Those guys I will open. say this. Uh, there's there's some, no, the guy, that guy in uh, Detroit, Leon DeBarber. Leon DeBarber. And the guy in Washington. Washington. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Robin. Robin Ficker. Oh. Yeah. Yes. No, there's, you know there's, the thing that annoyed me about him? How's to do? Y'all always suck. You know, because the, 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 the bullets back <laughs> He made it hard on us. He yeah. did. The, like, he got the, the, this guy. It was so funny with him. Like, he stand up right behind the bench and yell and scream and talk about you. Like, he would be telling, he'd, be, he'd know everything about every player, too. I mean, he, he'd be funny. He like, Charles Jones, you went to Auburn State. You've been in the NBA for 14 years. My new bowl, you're from Africa. You're from the Sudan. Uh, Terry Callis, you went to South Al I mean, he would know his stuff, and it was almost come. He would never curse. But we'd always say, dude, your team sucks all the time. But it hurt us. Good. It hurt us because one time George Mueller sounds playing, and he does something like a layup or something. But he's like, Shaq, you are no George Mueller <laughs> You will never be George. <laughs> and, you know, the people are laughing. And, you know, <laughs> Shaq come down, waka, waka, waka. And we lose. We just be like, man, relax, man. Yo, chill. Now, I think there's some great stuff that comes from fans. A lot. There's some bad stuff, too, oh, yeah. some idiotic stuff. But there's always some fans that come up with some good stuff. Uh, my favorite was playing with the Spurs, played with Kevin Willis, who you guys all know, one of the great guys of all time. And he's 42 years old at the time. And we're in Chicago. We're sitting there on the bench. There's a quiet moment. Fan right behind, behind us goes, hey, Willis, are you single? My grandma kind of likes you. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole bench burst out laughing. Kevin turns around, points to the guy, and just smiles. That's a good one. Kevin, you, you've been very quiet during the segment. I love that, the stories, uh, but, you know, everybody who talked trash always had a little bit of screw loose. They had, there was something a little bit there. Smitty talked a lot of trash, and he's just like, a facial, lot of yeah, facial yeah. expressions. Yeah. We, we used to have we used to have we used to have votes on the team like who had the best facial expressions after baskets. Chris Webber won that. Mm -hmm. Like after he scored and he run down. <laughs> that mean like, look, yeah. Mean, like we used to have votes on the team like that. But and again, as you you said, the fans probably had the best trash talk than ever. You know, we used to have guys screaming out, "Oh, you guys got a good team. Uh, he's a stopper." Oh, he's a stopper. 
Oh, Harold Presley, he's a stopper. Every time he gets in the game, Coach L, stop it, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you spent a lot of nights, you and Michael, in close quarters, and he's we a did. good talker. I mean, we did. What, so, what, so what would you hear from Michael? Uh, you know, everything. I mean, from Michael, from, I mean, one time I know he started counting backwards. You know, he said something like 38, and I didn't get it, Reggie. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he started saying 36. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he's going backwards. And now if he get to zero, he got 40. But it was me and Michael had a lot of talks. So it was fun. I, I, I love guys who talk. That, that's the way I... I got a lot of my trash talking, actually, by watching, growing up in L.A. and watching the, the, the Boston and the L.A. series, mm -hmm. was watching Larry Bird. Because you mentioned he was... And you didn't assume that he talked, but you knew he was talking. Oh, yeah. Because him and Michael Cooper used to go at it all the time. Right. And to hear that southern twang, yeah. and to hear him talk, and to hear him talk trash, it was priceless. Well, with Brad, you ever laugh? No, you ever oh, laugh? Oh, yeah, you laugh yeah, all the time. All the time. <laughs> my, my favorite Larry Bird trash talk story is, okay, it's the all-star game, I forget where. So uh, my teammate, Leon Wood, he, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA, so we we all sit in the, in the locker room getting loose, and Bird's not there yet. He, this one, he had won like two, two or three of those in a row, so... Everybody's in there, all these great shooters. Bird walked into this, hey guys, which one of you guys gonna come and suck a place? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the guy's like, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm gonna win the thing. I ain't not even worried about it. Who gonna come and suck a place? <laughs> Man, you could the room just went, all the air went out the room. And I just said, yep, you guys in trouble Supreme now. Supreme confidence. You know what, one time, and it's not even talking, one time we played the Bulls and we get off, and we're in the playoffs, and uh, we're in Washington, we get off the bus before the game, and uh, Jawan and Jordan are cool. Jawan, I mean, Jordan parks inside his Ferrari. We're getting off the bus, and he's smoking a cigar. Before and the game? Before the game. Yeah. And he's like, who's going to check me? Everybody, and we let him down, but we all pointed at Calvert. <laughs> <laughs> and Calvert Chaney. And now I think about it, he didn't say nothing. He was just, you know, he planned it. But <laughs> yeah, well, Mike, Michael was interested because, you know, we played in college, and so I used to, like, sometimes before the game, before the night before, we, you know, go eat or go to his hotel room, and he, and he was really mad at Reggie Theus because when he got traded, when, when Reggie got traded, Michael was the draft pick coming in. And Reggie was like, there's no guy who can replace me that's a rookie. So he said, just tell Reggie that I'm going to get 45 tonight. So I went to the locker room. I said, Reggie, <laughs> <laughs> Michael said he's going to get 45 tonight. Theus on the dribble, off to the right, takes it in, and Jordan steals the ball. Here's Michael Jordan on the drive. In on Joe Klein, all the way to the hoop, scoop shot. Oh, 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 oh. A spectacular play by Michael Jordan. Oh, oh, oh. So he ended up with 43. And so he comes into the locker room. He said, I didn't get 45, but you got to come to Chicago. <laughs> Like, now that's, that's Supreme Cup. <laughs> that's we Supreme points. You are. He was mad that he didn't get 45. Close us out here, Steve. What was the best line you used on anybody? <laughs> you know what? As somebody said it earlier. To, to be a trash talker, you got to be a great player. So I just listened. I just sat oh, back and listened. Why are you kidding me? Sat back and listened. I'll be ready. Give me the ball. Get <laughs> out of here. Yeah. 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 You are watching Open Court. <laughs> <laughs> Curious <laughs> Tales. Hey, five, four, three. <laughs> going down. Going down. <laughs> he said 38. Hold on. Oh, okay. He got to zero. <laughs> My first pair of shoes always used to get me in trouble because they had a theme song with it. So every time I walked to school, kids would say, buddy. <laughs> they make your feet feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> they cost a dollar ninety nine. <laughs>
has got to be the shoes. And in, in this case, look at the, the baby Jordans. This is from a long, long time uh, we ago. See. My, uh, yeah, they, they, well, they, my, my son Eric actually used to wear these bad boys. And then one day the Bulls were in town. And I, uh, and I said, Mike, you wouldn't mind signing these, would you? And they've been hanging in my office ever since. But <laughs> it's, it's always been special, has it not, for, you know, you guys get all the shoes you want. But, I mean, when you're coming up, you didn't get all there's the a, shoes. No, there's a point. Yeah, there's a point early on where you say, man, I do want to wear that pair of shoes. What was the first pair of shoes that really got you excited yet? Man, I was a shoeholic. So I, I used to love the Clyde, the Pumas of Clyde, because those were like you, you could wear and it looked like you were dressed up when you wore when regular clothes. You didn't even have to play. But the first pair of sneakers that to play in with a, a leather high top Adidas, because it was like the first high top Adidas that came out. The superstars. This is the, the, just the, no, before the superstars, just the regular shell toe high top, because it was shell toes at that time was only low tops. And then when they made the first pair, top tens. The top. Oh, tens. that's before top, top tens. tens. <laughs> top tens before top, top ten tens. is what I grew up it, on. Yes. Yes. I wore dude. for three years straight one pair because you know we weren't financially, you know supportive at the time, but it was the top tens with the blue stripes. You know, those were the, the See, smaller ones. The red, white, blue ones. The high top. See, this is when you, this is, this is when you go to the neighborhood. When you don't, like, you, How old are you talking about when you are, when you're wearing these? I'm wearing these at like 12, 11 and 12. And this is, when you go to the neighborhood and you say, Pops, he's gonna get one pair for you. But then the hood go, you go to the hood and go, listen, I'm trying to play ball. And then you local guys, they throw in and they'll get you three or four pair of sneakers, and then you have that that what hood. Are you going to? Oh, 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 I'm with you, Kenny. You gotta go to the hood. Hey, Steve. I'm with you. You gotta get the dudes in the hood. They gotta say, yo, he's the ball player in the neighborhood. Yes. We gonna take care of him. Hey, you know what? My first pair of shoes that I got were the Chuck were Chuck Taylors. Those were the bomb. But I remember, Lower high. They won the ball. High. Okay. Oh, Chuck Taylor. No, we the bomb. played four years in high school with Chuck Taylor's the the cloth one. I know. They weren't the bomb. The they, yeah, after, yeah, you know, yeah. You played in those <laughs> four years. I didn't think you could. Play, you know, you shouldn't play in Chuck Taylor's. That's what I said. Wait a those. minute. That's, you can't play in. What them. do you think those guys, Bill Russell, yeah, those guys played? Exactly, and that's so, why they all hey. walk funny today. Because <laughs> they had a show. Ask, ask Bill Russell about. Hey. Ask Bill Russell about that show. He'll be like, you know. But I tell you what's funny. I the the first. First shoes I got excited for with Chuck Taylor, but I remember my first leather pair. And I don't know, we didn't live in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first leather pair vividly because my mom had to. She came and knocked on the door of the dress room after every game and took them because I, she only she gave them to me right before the game and took them right and right after the game because they had to last me the whole season. Now. I had to wear them the whole season. Now, once the season over, I could wear them because you only got. I mean, we only get. We didn't have. In our hood, they didn't buy us. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they didn't chip in. I do. I, my friends used to make fun of me, but I said, "Dude, we, we're poor. These shoes got to last me the whole season. Okay. And they were awesome, though." What was the story from your hood, Steve? Well, the, the mean streets of Pacific Palisades. Yeah, we, <laughs> we go down the south side to our boys. And, <laughs> <laughs> on the south. Yeah, wait, on the <laughs> south side. There you go. Yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve, yeah. Steve, yeah. There you Steve go. Steve used to live next to hey. Phil Knight. Phil used to live next to Phil Knight. Can I get some Steve? So are you said uh, your mom didn't come and get the shoes after the, after the game? <laughs> no, no, she, did, she didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my... But but my first pair of sneakers uh, was uh, the the Dr. J's. The le the uh, remember they had the leather Dr. Mm -hmm. J's the first Dr. one. J's. I didn't get the leather ones. I got the the pleather ones. They had the cheaper ones that were like you know the fake leather, but they were still Dr. J's, and I was I was proud of those. I, I got a feeling you got the leather ones, Steve. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I did not. <laughs> you, might have to I did not. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody. Jim, the top tens brings memories to me. Yeah. I think everybody, the all stars. But for me, you know, th there was a shoe that everybody in Detroit wanted was a shell to Adidas. No question. And if you could play, you played in low top shell to Adidas. It was just a sign that I don't have to go hard. So my whole thing is I don't need the high tops. I always wanted a low pair. When I finally got that low pair of shell to Adidas and put that bullseye on your back. So now you walked around with those shell to Adidas. So those are the ones for me. 
That really, that you know, I remember. If you, you didn't know about that, you know about the original with just the the, the three yeah, stripes. Yeah, three stripes. That's, that's, that's what exactly. And you know what? I, if I, if I'm correct. Bill Cosby's original show, way, 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 yeah, way back when, yeah. when he was the PE coach, yeah. that's what he was wearing. Oh, yeah. He wore those low cut. Listen, if you wore, the, like you said, yeah. if you wore leather that's sneakers right. when we, there it is, right here. Oh yeah, you got exactly. Well, yeah, you got it. You can even wear it with a suit. Yeah. But I'm what? saying, if you wore, if you wore those growing up, like you said, the bullseye, because it meant that you were spending this much money to play basketball and to and to mess up your shoe. A leather shoe that at that time but was like 30. That was that was too. 29.99. They didn't say 30 because they sound like too much. 29.99 <laughs> right. was the price of a shell toe Adidas. And if you spent that much on a shoe at that time, you had it going on. My first pair of shoes always used to get me in trouble because they had a theme song with it. So every time I walked to school, kids would say, "Buddy." <laughs> they make your feet feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> they cost a dollar ninety nine. No, no, buddy, stop. We got to go. We got thousands. We used to call them skippers. Yeah, 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 yeah. buddies on us. You got a big foot too. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey man, dollar ninety nine for your size. Yeah. Hey, charge you extra. No, eleven. You know, Ernie, you they found your. You're talking about, yeah, the, you're talking about the Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah. That's probably one of the greatest single things Michael Jordan ever did. He is the shoe generation. He was the first guy, like, nobody thought shoes were cool. People just want to play basketball and sneakers. But Michael Jordan started designing his, when they started, Nike started doing his own shoes. Everybody had to have them. I mean, that's probably the greatest thing he ever did for, for shoes. It's unbelievable. Me, uh, the first shoe I had was the Adidas, con uh, the first shoe I really wanted uh, was the Adidas Conductor with Patrick mm -hmm. Ewing and uh, the, the leather the ones, high top, the Conductor. You didn't want the Ewings? Up. You didn't get the Ewings? I got the uh, Ewings, the Adidas Conductors. Okay. Yeah, they, no, it was Ewings when he was, okay. and I got the poster of him sitting on there, but just to talk about shoes real quick, uh, every time you got shoes, you used to get a poster, so I had uh, Chuck and the, um, uh, what do you call the, um, Supreme Court. Supreme, Supreme Court. Or uh, the, the really first shoe I really liked was the Air Max, the low tops with the black strap across we wore at Michigan and Hirachi. So when I really think of shoes, like you said, with Jordan but they used to for give the you, shoe. But they used to give you a poster with the shoe. But that's what so I'm saying. Like, like you get Ice the George Man, Man, Ice Man sitting yeah. in the chair with that ice, was, and he had the, the, he had the pad. Had. Yeah. Like, George Gervin sitting on the block ice of ice cream. Yeah. But they don't even give you posters Yeah, give us some posters now. You charge you 20000 Talk to Nike. As you went into the league, though, so it, how many pair of shoes in a season would you go through? You're, you said you remember in, when you're growing up, he had a, pair, a, pair, a pair is going to, you know, a lot of guys, what, use one pair of shoes per game? Yeah, but yeah. That, that's just... I wasn't I mean, that snobby. That, that, no, but, some, no. but some guys I was do. the worst. Some, well, Michael did. I, Michael, I, didn't, like, I didn't like new shoes. I couldn't. Uh, I, I was I, the worst. I wore, in Vernon Maxwell and, and the Kimi, I wore four pair of shoes the whole game, and I would put... What? And I, the whole season... But I would have my my garage just I would hoard the sneakers, man. Cause it's, so you were really trying wear, to save. And then wear them so all you're not summer. Giving the team your I would all, wear. <laughs> trying to steal but shoes. I, I didn't like new shoes either. I, I like the. Shoes. I never four I, shoes I, in 82 games. I would I would wear. I never yeah, got crazy. practices. I never, wear, new like shoes like never bothered me. I probably yeah, I played more than four. I probably went through a pair. It nasty. It was nasty. Every two weeks. How about you, the 20, tw size 23? Well, size 23, and as a CEO of my own company, I switched up every game. <laughs> <laughs> Some soul searching here on NBA TV. As so you were like court Steve continues. when he was little then. <laughs> just, oh, there's, uh, there's Pacific Palisades. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's nice. Uh, we'll be back. <laughs> and then when I turned to, around to him, he did me like that in front of everybody. And I looked up at my mom and dad. And like, <laughs> how about how about on the suit of armor? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Tough shot, forced it, O'Neal an offensive rebound. Banks three, Jordan the block and the steal.
seconds. Fun. What do I do now? Yeah. And here, Kukliano with the exclamation point. The great move around Barkley. Santa Claus is coming to town. Happy holidays from the Philadelphia 76ers. And we welcome you back to Open Court on NBA TV. Okay, it is time. This, is, this segment is, is nothing but, but truth-telling. This, you know, I, I want no inhibitions here. I want you guys to come clean. I want the most embarrassing moment in your basketball lives. And this is, this is one of those moments where you say, man, I'm glad nobody was videotaping that. I'm glad there's no evidence of this, but you are going to tell the story of your most embarrassing Moment. Yeah, and yeah. you get to lead off, Chris. And Kenny's not my timeout. Kenny just said it was the timeout, so I gotta just. <laughs> 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 yeah, Kenny. You gonna get it out early? Just make sure I sure. <laughs> NBA team fans, TNT fans know Kenny, fans, no, Kenny said something smart doing it. <laughs> but in the break. <laughs> but no, I was playing against uh, uh, Terry Durock, and uh, he, he, he was a he was a fireman, and he used to play in the NBA. But he was a fireman. He played for Boston, and I remember he was just. I remember he looked like he was pregnant because it was all fat right here. And I remember he was just holding the ball, and uh, we were playing at St. Cecilia. And, you know, I'm young, I'm in college, I'm dunking on people, I'm making faces, you know, everybody. And, and St. Cecilia's a, a gym where, you know, maybe 100 <laughs> people on this side. What did you say, Steve? 100 people, but it's a wall right there. You can't even go out of bounds on that side because... It's all wall. It's all wall. So Terry Durock keeps looking like this and pump faking me, and he makes a shot. I'm like, whatever. So the crowd's getting hyped. He does it again. Crowd's getting hyped. So he did something where he crosses me, and he's old, so he crosses me. I don't know what it was, and I, I fall a step back, and he hits a jump shot. Everybody, the 100 people from this side, run across the gym and smack the wall and then go back and sit down. Yeah. So in the middle of the game, I'm like, listen, you got to move because it's just people like, oh, my God, oh! and they're <laughs> smacking the wall, and they go back and sit down. And you, you got to kind of be there to understand it, but if you could feel the whole arena, Praising somebody when they dog and you getting up, running across the court. It's no timeout, it's no technicals or nothing. It's just the fact that everybody knows you just got showed up by a man 40 years Slapping old. Slapping. <laughs> My most embarrassing moment, I was just started playing basketball probably. It was like 10 years old. And it was our, you know, maybe our fifth game in a little, little local league. And uh, it was our first close game. So we were playing in a close game, and the coach calls timeout. He said, okay, we just, we, we're up. He said, we're going to take our time. We're going to run the clock out. We're going to sit on the ball and not let them have an opportunity to win. So, I mean, I'm 10 years old. I never heard certain phrases before. So I was like, okay, we're going to take it, time, get it into Kenny, and I'm going to sit on the ball, and we're going to run the no, clock out. He's like, no, no. So when they threw the ball in, I grabbed it. And I said, oh. <laughs> right, so, so the team, like the team doesn't know what's going on, right? So everybody's like laughing in the gym. So I, and then the kids are running at me. I get it up and put it in the clock runs out. So my coach is just cracking Mr. Wilmot Benjamin. Mr. Benjamin's coming over to me. He goes, he said, one thing they'll never say about you, son. You're coachable. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Courage, your turn. Uh, uh, well, I've had a few of them. I routinely got embarrassed by guys who were a lot faster than me, for sure. But uh, I actually had to guard Michael one night. Uh, I played in Cleveland for the Cavs for a few years and started about 20 straight games because Craig Elo was injured. And most nights it was all right. I could find somebody I could guard. But here we play the Bulls, and most nights. I got Michael. <laughs> So I, we start out the game. I get the first shot of the game, first possession. He closes out on me. I knock down a jumper. I'm feeling pretty good. The next couple <laughs> minutes, he, he's just kind of dumping the ball inside. We've played five minutes. He hasn't scored, and I'm kind of feeling pretty good about myself. And finally, I realize, boy, he hasn't even shot yet. So he was just trying to get everybody else involved. Long story short, he finished with 48, and I finished with two. <laughs> it was like, bam, all of a sudden, he just, it was like he decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start scoring now, and I'm going to guard the guy, and there was nothing I could do. Shaq, did anything embarrassing ever happen in your career? I always took pride in being the big man that never got dunked on. So one time in New Jersey, because I'm from Newark, New Jersey, in front of all the fans, playing against Derek Coleman. And if you don't know Derek Coleman, he's left-handed, he's a beast. So Derek has me on the block, <laughs> and he takes one dribble, two dribbles, drop step, hit me with a little bow, and dunked it. 
And I didn't really know he dunked it until I came down in the void. <laughs> and then when I turned to, to, around to him, he did me like that in front of everybody. And I looked up at my mom and dad, and they like, <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bench, and I had a little tear in my eye. I was just sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so mad. Reg. Well, look, I was Janet Jackson before the whole wardrobe malfun malfunction. Huh? Okay, wait a second. Oh, oh. This goes way back to. This goes. What? This, this, <laughs> yeah. This, what? this goes way, way back wow. before Janet Jackson, before the pasties and everything. Oh, wow. ba back to, to high school. <laughs> back to high school <laughs> basketball. <laughs> you might have got it. You might have got it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank God it was in the in the 80s. So okay, even in the 80s, you definitely right. got a phone call. It, it, it was close, but look, I was a freshman. <laughs> I was playing JV basketball. I didn't think I was going to be able to get in. <laughs> Such a nice, look, I didn't think I was going to be able to get in. Okay. I had my uniform on, but I forgot to put my shorts on. And as you know back then, when you wore drop straps, you wore just a drop strap. There wasn't tights back then. Right, right, right. It was a drop strap that showed your. Wow. It just had it over. A drop strap. Here. We know so I, didn't I, was going to I didn't think I was going to play. I was going to play. I was going to riding the pine, and coach was like, Reg, you're in. I'm thinking, and I totally forgot because it's, you know, fourth quarter. I get to the scores table. I take him off, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> Then you were like, oh, it's uh, was, who's at the game, man? <laughs> she started doing the Janet Jackson. <laughs> 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 the president. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have Justin Timberlake to cover my ass. I didn't have Justin to do this. It was just me like that. <laughs> 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 I mean, I was oh, the original God. Janet Jackson. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> have we gone to Charles? Have we gone to Charles? Can, can you can you top this? <laughs> no, I can't top that. No, <laughs> I don't remember that much. Uh, embarrassing stuff. I remember though. I, I used to always uh, say, no, "No, I never felt really felt like anything embarrassing." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I remember when I first got to the NBA. I used to always say, "Well, nobody's going to dunk on me," hmm. and I only remember who it was. To be honest with you, and after you get dunked on like 10, 11 times, you're like, "Ooh, these other guys can play too," but everybody gets dunked on, and all guys, all young guys, say, "Ain't nobody gonna dunk on me." Ernie, what was your Sorry. most embarrassing moment on television? Most, most oh, I we, we have, don't have enough time. We don't, even, we don't have enough time to <laughs> go in there. I would think it would probably be at, I know what at it Paris is. Island. <laughs> hey, Help me down here, boys. I'm dying. No. When we were down there with, no, the, no, with the Marines, I think, no. and I couldn't. Your thing, and we could get the video for it, is when you were in the dunk contest in a lap. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Glasses. Yeah. He was smuggling. Okay, yes. And I was actually wearing, actually wearing, <laughs> actually wearing, uh, actually wearing Dominique Wilkins shoes. Uh, his, his books. Ernie, you were in Brooks and your that newborn night. son's and shorts. I, and I wore somebody. Yeah, those were there's some really <laughs> bad tight shorts. shorts. Yeah, but diapers. <laughs> but you know what? As, as he bad, had diapers as, on. As bad as, but as bad as that was, <laughs> it was, it was nowhere near Janet. I'll tell you. <laughs> your brother, your brother played some big league baseball. Yeah, and I grew up a huge, a huge baseball player. Yeah. I was an all-world pitcher. All-world. 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 For more open court, check us out on NBA.com and NBA TV. Um, okay, so you all made your living playing basketball. <clears throat> Were you good at other sports, Shaq? Well, uh, I won the punt, pass, and kick contest. Did you really? <laughs> yes. at, at what age? <laughs> Did you? Nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get the tape. It was six I'll, two. I'll be you. Oh, no, <laughs> no, six actually, five. no, no. Actually, I came in and I dominated so much that the uh, other parents wanted to see my birth certificate. Because mm -hmm. I was kicking that thing about 60 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Tight spiral, too. Yeah. I was really great at backyard badminton. I used to spike that thing on all my cousins. Very, <laughs> very intimidating, I, I can only imagine. Uh, C. Webb, was there anything besides hoop? Yeah, football. I, you know, I wanted to play football growing up, so I think I was pretty good tight end. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I could catch Did it. they throw a lot in high school? They threw a lot, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Especially when I was the same size I am now in high school. 
<laughs> yeah, you get in the red zone, just post up. Do <laughs> just like that, post up and throw it. And he also was an artist. Yeah. Very. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, no, that's, no, unfortunately no. that's not a sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> Reggie, if Reggie, I just you're teach you to give you a F. <laughs> your, your brother, your brother played some big league baseball. Yeah, right? and I grew up with a, huge, a huge baseball player. Yeah. I, I was an all-world. Pitcher. All world. Oh, world. Oh, world. world. Oh, world. Oh, world. All world. All world. All world. All world. Not even all world. All world. Not all world. world. Not all world. Not all world. I'm telling you, world. I could play Major League Baseball today. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 That's left. Outfield. I could be an outfielder. Bat left, throw uh, right. I bat left, throw right, which is which is odd. Which would be an advantage. Okay. Yeah, does not allow. What would be your average though? Two fifty, and I would make hundred million. How many how many home runs have you? Twenty. No, no, I'm not I'm not a home run hitter. I'm just on base, steal. I'm doing that. Just getting done. I do that. Yeah. I don't believe any of that. Okay, Steve. I ain't really have any. I would say basketball is the second sport. That's it. Basketball. What was the first one? Basketball. <laughs> horseshoes, horseshoes. Okay. I was, oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Horseshoes, nice. I was nice. nice. Okay, very uh, good. You know what? What else? What we played down in Orlando, Ernie? Oh, we played bocce, bocce ball. Bocce oh, yeah, you were pretty good at that. Nice. If you don't know the name of it, you probably wouldn't. You're not good at it. <laughs> Steve Kerr. Baseball. I played baseball. We played in, in, uh, in high school two years in a row. We got to Dodger Stadium, played in the city finals. Oh, yeah. Was what what, what position, Steve? I was a pitcher. So who was nicer, you or Reggie? Well, he was all world, so there's no way. <laughs> we need your best. Yeah, yeah. What'd you hit we on the gun, Steve? Yeah. yeah, pretty good zip on your fastball. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have the gun back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, you know, I, I didn't play in it. I, I played football one day, mm -hmm. and I realized yeah. that wasn't for me. <laughs> that football, I, you know, football and boxing are my two favorite sports. But it takes men to play those. Sports. Did you ever box? No, no, uh, no. I mean, officially? No, no. Okay. But I tell you what, football, that was the longest day of my life. And then I realized <laughs> after that one day it wasn't for me. But basketball's been the greatest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> no, no, no backyard badminton against Shaq. Somebody said uh, he no, was no, a hot, no, no, hot dog eating contest. <laughs> 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> back. I didn't say that. Wow. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan's is calling. Hey, what? <laughs> he's new to the team. He's, going against the team. he's new to the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give him a little Let's time. Let's see what he's at. Hey, let's see what he's at a year from now. Let's see what he's at a year from now. 